another three second. Three, Thanks. two, one. Uh, good afternoon to all of you who have joined us on this webinar. A warm welcome to Honorable Justice and Sunil Ambuani, who has joined us in this webinar. I extend my warm welcome. Today we are joined by an illustrious personality who needs no introduction. Justice Sunil Ambuani has been a pioneer in the process of re-engineering of application of information and communication technology for delivering justice. As judicial officers, we all know how pendency affects the system. The addition of new cases or what we refer to as the docket flow is a growing concern for judiciary today. Despite the best efforts put in by each and every officer, we are unable to resolve this issue from its roots. The present pandemic has given a new dimension to this issue. It has been the involvement of computer technology in the legal institution that has come as a boon for us to cope with this situation. E-courts are enabling the justice delivery system in becoming affordable and beneficial for rendering services. His Lordship has provided new valuable insights to this e-court project. His Lordship's active participation in e-court plan is well documented besides having given new direction to second phase project in capacity as the chairman of e-committee in 1617. In today's program, Honorable Justice Ambwani will guide us as to what extent we can enhance our working capacity by use of the ICT tools and improve the quality of dispensing justice. It's my call to all participating officers who have joined us on this webinar to actually join the interactive session and seek help from Justice Ambwani in gaining perspective and enhancing our working capacity. We look forward for a healthy interaction. I, I would now request on this honorable speaker, sir, to guide us accordingly. Good afternoon, friends. All those who have joined, I can see there are 96 attendees, the judicial officers of various levels of the Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. My greetings to all of you. We are passing through a very disturbed time. Uh, the COVID-19 has virtually taken the call of putting the entire nation in emergency. Delhi is in a very, very bad shape, extremely bad shape. Hospitals are overflowing, no oxygen, no medicines, but we are grappling. It's a war and we have to fight this war. But the opportunity is that by the use of technology, we can still hold these webinars and seminars and conferences and do virtual hearings due to the uh, digital technology. I let me introduce myself first. I was a, a judge at Allahabad High Court. In fact, I practiced for 25 years as a lawyer and also within that period I practiced in Supreme Court also as advocate in record for seven years. Then I was a, became a judge in Allahabad High Court in 2001, remained there up to 2014. And I was given the job of Chief Justice of Rajasthan for one year. During my period at Allahabad, uh, for five years, I was the chairman of the computerization committee of the High Court, as well as the computerization committee of the district courts in the uh, in Uttar Pradesh. That gave me a lot of exposure to the technology as to how the technology is going to take over and help us in judicial dispensation, judicial administration and judicial dispensation. Now, as a Chief Justice of Rajasthan High Court, I did not have much opportunity because it was a very short time and the systems were very well placed. Rajasthan has done extremely well on uh, technology side. Allahabad had a unique and distinct advantage of having its own data center. We had our servers, just as Yatin Singh, who was earlier the chairman, he was a very enthusiastic computer man. He had uh, 
prepared excellent data center. So we had entire, almost entire uh, case, cases and records uh, in the on the our servers. But the district judiciary was uh, not as much progressive. So the the, the first phase of uh, the e-court uh, project was initiated during when I was there as the chairman of the computerization committee of district courts. Now from there I carried the experience to Rajasthan and after my retirement uh, I was given an opportunity to serve as a chairman of the e committee for about seven to eight months. This was in 2016-17 when phase two of the e court project was being implemented. Thereafter, Justice Madan Lokur joined back. And uh, then after the retirement of Justice Madan Lokur, at present we have Justice uh, Dhananjay Chandachur as the chairman of the committee. And Justice R.C. Chauhan, a retired judge of the Bombay High Court, as the vice chairman of the e committee. Now, Justice uh, Chandachur is a brilliant judge, a brilliant planner. He had also produced, a, he had also scripted the vision document for entire judiciary in India for 2020. So with Justice R.C. Chauhan as the man who has actually worked from phase to date in Maharashtra and had implemented the e projects in Maharashtra, I think the e-committee is going to do wonders. Now, Mr. Parihar asked me, but the purpose of this uh, webinar was to interact with the judicial officers of Jammu and Kashmir and to guide them as to how to manage their cases regarding the court, the case management and case flow management with the help of the, uh, the progress made and the tools provided by the e-committee. Uh, May I tell you that I have not practiced in district court, although I did a lot of cases in district court and I'm aware of the processes in the district court. But I was not regularly practicing in district courts and I started actually my practice in high court. So for the working of the district courts, I think all of you are more experienced than me. Justice R.C. Chauhan, who is now the vice chairman of the committee, does have that experience. I will be in this uh, in this uh, webinar. I will be introducing to you as to what is the progress of the computerization of the district courts. I will take about five minutes for the first phase, ten minutes for the second phase, and then I'll tell you it's a new third phase of which the policy document has been released by the e committee as to what is going to come in future. Now, as you can see, uh, I'm an old man. I'm now about 69. And uh, I'm not very, very, very good in technology, digital technology. But I believe that all of you young people who are working in district courts today are not only using computers for a very, very long time, but you're also very well versed with it. And uh, for you, it is absolutely necessary. I mean, there can be no doubt about it. That to know as to what is going on in judiciary on digitization of judiciary. You also should know what is going to come because all of you are going to remain in judiciary for uh, one, uh, one or two decades or maybe three to four decades. Some of you may reach up to high court. Some of you may become chief justices. Some of you, God willing, may go even up to Supreme Court. So as young judicial officers who have been selected to serve the judiciary of the state, you should not only be aware of laws and the procedures in court, but as to the progress made and use of the tools provided to you by the e-committee. The digitization, which is the catchword today. Now see what 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 are what are you doing today? You are doing your entire banking by net banking, almost the entire banking. In this COVID period, people have stopped going to. Uh, the places, banks, or wherever the work can be done uh, by online, the people and young generation is using it 
not only for uh, banking but also simple things like ordering uh, goods for the uh, for the house and even ordering food and uh, you know it, it 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 what we find is it's such a easy method such and we have developed such a confidence in these methods that our life has become simpler much simpler provided we, we, we do not misuse it uh, we have all kind of platforms whether it is entertainment uh, travel uh, shopping anything you say anything you say is available on the internet now you see what happened was that in the year 2007 8 when i was a judge of allahabad high court i felt that when we were we are doing all over banking on uh, in the digitized platforms we are traveling on digital platforms you see we we we, we book our train tickets plane tickets everything on why can't we have such a system for our judiciary and at, it was at the date that time that in the year 2005 actually we started 5 year late uh, the digitization of all almost all the systems in the country started somewhere in the year uh, 2000 1990 the internet came to india in the year 2000 we had computers big box like computers but people started working on it the lawyers uh, i was also the first one to buy a computer for myself it was an assembled computer in the year 1990 working as a lawyer but in the by the 2005 the, the all the institutions in the country had adopted to the computerization and were waiting for the digital revolution to come we started a little late 2005 i remember 2005 there was a conference at the national judicial academy chief justice lahoti was attending it and at that time uh, all the important people the law minister the finance minister and everybody was there attending that conference and the in fact the mr montek singh alu waliya suggested who was the finance secretary at that time to our chief justice said, why are you like why are you lagging behind why don't you come up and uh, join the digitized movement of processing in this world so he said we are very much interested now we were not finding a, a person who knew the law and the court processes and the computerization so they shortlisted the supreme court shortlisted shortlisted a judge from karnataka high court justice gc baruka he was earlier a judge in patna high court and in the year in the year 1994 95 the first computerized list cause list was published in in, the, in our country in patna high court he was the one he was very much uh, interested in computerization he was picked up as the first chairman of the e committee uh, and that that has started the e court project which is an integrated mission mode project as part of our national e governance plan negp for indian judiciary uh, chetan ji would you put the first slide on the so i'll just uh, put the slide okay. so please confirm if you can see the first page sir no i cannot so can you see the screen now uh, no Uh, Sanjay sir, uh, Priya sir, can you see the screen? Should I continue? Should I continue? Then continue, sir. I think I'll just check in the meantime. We'll All right. Checking. So the object was ICT enablement, means information and communication technology enablement to enhance the judicial productivity, both qualitatively and quantitatively, to make justice delivery system affordable, accessible, cost effective. transparent and accountable now that is how justice baruka framed the first national policy and action plan for implementing icj in indian judiciary in the year 2005 it took 2 years 
for the government of india to approve it february 2007 it was approved and it was revised in 2010 with timelines up to 2014 which were revised to 2015 so it took about 7 seven, seven to 8 years of time to put in motion and to accomplish the targets of uh, the first phase a first phase was actually providing laptops to the judicial offices providing hardware to the courts and court office systems thereafter to to prepare a lan and van connect them all together and to start the process of building the first uh, software now one of the policy decision which was taken in phase 1 was that we will not go for proprietary software like we will not go for any software of which we have to purchase and the license has to be renewed every year so it was done on a free and open source software which is called fos free and open source software now operating system was ubuntu now you will some of you may have wondered as to why ubuntu was chosen because ubuntu was it's a debian based linux system which was updated and uh, updated to the requirements of the judiciary by the software team of the e committee now the not only government of india but the most important part which was played in this uh, development of digitization of judiciary was by nic national informatics center nic nic gave a very dedicated team to the judiciary now they started developing it now another principal policy feature was that cis means case information system which will be on free and open source solutions and on platform ubuntu platform will be actually developed in two forms yes i got the slide uh, can you put me to slide number 3 chetan can you put me to slide number 3 yes free and open source software and all the software solutions prepared for the e court project are based on free and open source solutions we do not need to obtain any license or to pay any subscription charges the operating system based on ubuntu was customized at the office of the e committee and it is being regularly updated now object was to prepare a common case information software for the entire district judiciary with core and periphery models core model is where The, the the software will not be shared the source code would not be shared and the core model will be used for only purposes of retrieving data for or studying data for supreme court and where the parliament requires it and for research and development purposes and there was one periphery model periphery model was for high courts now you see one of the biggest challenges with the committee faced was that at that time we had 24 high courts today we 20 24 states and about 22 high courts today we have 29 states and about 25 high courts now every high court has a different uh, system although we work under one same constitution of india all courts are created all appointments made and the supreme court is trying to to sort of organize and coordinate all the courts but all high courts have a different history now some of you it is in some of you it may be interesting to know that our civil laws were based on two different models one was the lahore model which is the punjab model you can say on the set of rules were framed other was the calcutta in one model the court fees is paid only after the court determines the valuation in another model the court fees has to be paid before the matter is filed now there were different set of rules it was an extremely difficult job for the e committee to coordinate and to bring all the rules and standardize them this was a very big challenge before the court so periphery model was developed so that the each high court by the time we come under one platform may be able to modify the uh, the processes which may be which have to be worked on the digitized models for the purposes of functioning of the uh, computerization uh, 
Is it in the next slide? Sir. Yes. Now, at that time we had the the this is Baruka uh, actually gave laptops to all the judicial officers. At that time there were about uh, fourteen thousand judicial officers. So first contract was given to HCL, and the first laptops were given to almost all the fourteen thousand judicial officers who did not have much knowledge of uh, computing, use of computers. By the time computers had come and young people had knowledge of uh, computing on the computers. But the, we, the judges, you know, uh, the judges, those who were of a little advanced age or uh, those who were at this level of additional district judge and district judges, they were not very, very much used to this kind of a working on computers. So the first phase also envisaged ICT training and education. ICT training and edu education was a very, very important part, and we call it change management. As a part of the change management, so whatever management was there, we had to change it. Exercise undertaking by the e committee, judicial officers and staff were trained in the use of, firstly, they were trained in the use of Ubuntu Linux operating system, which was installed on their laptops, which were provided to them. And thereafter, the case information software, CIS software. Now, it was very difficult to train 13,000 judicial officers at a time, or even on internet, because the internet was not available almost at all the places. So, a model was adopted. This model was actually prepared in uh, Netherlands for the NDPS judges to quickly train the officers. The model of training of trainers, it is called TOT model. So in all the training sessions, the best candidate, because who has an aptitude, both for understanding, learning, as well as training was selected. And then he would impart training to others. This is called TOT models. And that is how master trainers were prepared, virtually prepared. Now, I'm very happy to learn, Mr. Pariyar told me, that you have about 10 master trainers in uh, Jammu Kashmir. These master trainers, the job of the master trainers was to go back in their districts and train their own officers. And this became extremely successful. So we reached a point where almost 70 to 80 percent officers were trained, both in Ubuntu Linux as well as the CIS. These were different trainings. At many in many states, the high courts imparted these trainings uh, in, from the judicial academies. The next step was judicial process re-engineering, which I told you that almost all the states, uh, high courts, states and the high courts were having uh, rules. You know, uh, we have, as I told you, one constitution, high court, there are high court rules, and high court also frames district court rules, both as a exercise to to, to, to for the best practices in the district courts, as well as for the purposes of, as well as for the purposes of uh, removing the difficulties on day to day basis. So these rules were they were so much in bundle, so scattered, so cluttered that you had to bring all the rules together, standardize them for ICT enablement because it was not possible to bring the entire country under one roof of digitization unless there were standardized rules rules and procedures. This is called judicial process re-engineering. And not only this, the case types, the name of the, 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 the cases were also different. Somewhere they will call it appeal, somewhere call it regular appeal, somewhere call it uh, uh, 96 appeal. So all had to be brought under the uh, one standardized processes. Uh, so in the first phase, you know, as I say, very simply put it, the first time we bought computer, we installed computers, we had a platform on which the digitization had to be used. And thereafter, a software was prepared. The software was not extremely good. All the data of the cases in the country had to be brought on that software. So this, and this is a chart which 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 roughly says as to 
what progress was achieved up to 2010-2012 in the first phase. About 14,000 sites were ready, 13,000 land were installed, 13,436 the, the software was deployed. Now, and 840 codes were provided with video conferencing equipments. Mr. Chetan, next slide. And with this, we in the year 2013, uh, a national e code national portal was launched. Now, this was the first launch of the e code services for the litigants and advocates. Up to now, the office staff, the uh, technical staff was being trained. 2013, Supreme Court opened up e codes for the litigants, advocates, judiciary as well as the civil society. They could access the cause list, case status, case status from any source like case number, FIR number, party name, and then daily orders and final judgments were being also uploaded for being accessed by these people. Now, this was possible because of the development of the CIS and in CIS and creating a database on this CIS. And with this, the district court websites were also launched. Every district court in about 650 or 660 districts in the entire country, they launched their websites on the Drupal template, which was an active website, which would give them how many courts are there, which court has which jurisdiction, uh, and what is the name of the judge, whether he's on leave on that day and all that. Mr. Chetan, next slide. Uh, I'm not going on this. Next, Kadija. Now was the time for launching e code project phase two. At present, we are working on phase two. The phase three document, uh, uh, document has been released and suggestions have been invited on in the phase three document, but we are on phase two. So we'll be talking only on phase two now. And then I'll introduce to, to what exactly phase three is. Now, phase two of the e code project is based on policy and action plan document of the e committee approved on 8th January 2014. And Government of India approved it in 2015. Phase one budget was 975 crores. Phase two budget was 1670 crores. It was a very ambitious project, and government also contributed very generously. The E committee's role was clearly defined in phase two. In phase one, E committee was only standardizing the hardware, monitoring the purchase of hardware, installation of hardware, LAN, WAN, and internet connectivity, the power uh, backup to the all the district courts, and to develop a first CIS system. In this phase two, E committee's role was limited. It was brought down to policy planning providing a strategic direction and guidance for the effective implementation of the project. And then there was a lot of decentralization. The high courts were made the implementation agencies in respect of many areas like purchase of hardware, providing laptops, prepare, preparing databases, preparing data centers, and developing development of the periphery models of the CIS. Designs and specifications of hardwares were to be procured and finalized by the e-committee. The and new staffs were created, new positions were created. Like every high court was required to have a computer committee of high court judges, a central project coordinator, CPC, which we call it, district court computer committees, a nodal officer, and systems officer. And many states and the many high courts provided uh, uh, a, a posts for them, carders for them, and people were employed. The computer centers were set up. They started functioning. Uh, next, next slide. Now, with this development, now I'll come to a very interesting feature of, which is in fact not really a part of uh, E-Committee uh, Phase 2. This is National Judicial Data Grid. Now, I don't have the audience before me, otherwise I would have asked as to how many of you have accessed and uh, actually made research on National Judicial Data Grid. Do you know with the development of CIS, Case Information System, 
entire data started to be collected on the national judicial data grid. This is the world's biggest storehouse of the statistics and the actual on actual real time figures of the cases which are pending in our district courts. You all know that we have we have uh, more than 650 districts, more than 3000 court complexes, more than 22000 courts in our country. Uh, and all of them were feeding on the CIS system to create a national judicial data grid. This national judicial data grid is a storehouse, storehouse of the entire data. Not only as to how many cases are pending and how many cases are being decided. What is the length and life of the case? You know, the CIS has so much of information as to who are the uh, plaintiffs or the respondents or the in the state size, who are the accused? What is the crime? What is the uh, section of the IPC on which the crime is committed? The FIR number, the charge sheet when it was filed. Every stage of the case with every information in CIS 2.1. Now at the time of filing of the case, more than 200 fields are required to be filled up when the case is filed. So that CIS has a complete knowledge as to what is what is actually the statistics of the cases and what is happening in those cases, not only the, at the time of filing, but also continuously when the case is progressing. Now, I would also have asked all of you now about there are 147 attendees as to how many of you have downloaded ecodegov.in app on their mobile phones. E code GOP, e code uh, dot in app is actually an app which gives you information. Of course, it is it interoperably connected with National Judicial Data Grid. As to the progress of the case, uh, when I was uh, chairman of the e committee, I, because everyone can also put every a judge or a lawyer can also put 50 cases on it of which the information is provided to him on real time basis. Uh, I stored about uh, I, I downloaded about seven cases, seven at that time, one from Kerala, one from Tamil Nadu, one from Gujarat, UP, Delhi and one from Calcutta to find out the progress of the case. You will be surprised that out of seven in last five years, only two have been finally decided and in one case from Tamil Nadu, Despite 65 dates fixed by the judge, no progress has been made. This is the power of the National Judicial Data Grid and the e code GOV dot in to get the information. Now, what we have not been able to do is to make use of this information because of our own difficulties, systemic difficulties. Now, the object of National Judicial Data Grid was data mining, online analytical processing, business intelligence tools and ICJS in integration with interoperable criminal justice system. Now, this is another very interesting feature added by the e, e code phase two ICJS. ICJS is interoperable criminal justice system. In this. The courts. Police and jails are interlinked. Interlinked. So that each one can share the information from from the other. Now, as a judges working on the, the criminal cases, uh, I can I know that you have been feeling a lot of difficulty in getting information whether police report has been submitted, whether charge sheet has been filed, uh, how much time the, the the accused is spent in jail. Now, all this information I understand that every time that you ask the prosecutor, he takes two weeks, four weeks, one month. Sometimes two months to give you this information in bail, whether he has any antecedent history. All this will be available. Actually, it is available. It is only the, 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 the horizontal and vertical interoperability of the entire criminal justice system has to be made functional. Chetanji, next slide. Now, case information is software was upgraded. Upgraded 
uh, it is called NCCIS case information system 2.0 now 2.1 now I think 2.2 has come into upgraded 2.2 has also come now every time it is upgraded uh, it is upgraded to collect more information more useful information both for interoperability as well as for utilization. The best thing about the CIS was that the entire the CIS 2.0 has been developed by the NIC Pune team. I had gone and I have seen the working of very dedicated staff. Very dedicated staff is working almost uh, 24 7 to, to, to take care of the problems of the digitization and also to keep on developing the common software. It is again on FOSS. This time it is bilingual. It is not only in English and Hindi. It is also available in Marathi, Gujarati, Kannada and Tamil. A unique thing has been created is called CNR, unique case number for every court, every case in district courts. That is how a case is identified. That is how its progress is monitored. And that is how it is stored in the data, uh, data house the data database in NJDG. Now, what is this unique case number? I think all of you know it, but I'll just explain it to you. It is a 16 digit number. First two digits are for the state. Just like suppose it is uh, Tamil Nadu, so it will be TN. Then two next two digits is for the district. Suppose it is well so the VE. Then next six digits. Next two digits are for the court, court complex. We have three court complexes. One court main court complex. Another court complex is for the special courts like family courts, juvenile courts. The third court complex is for the outlying courts. Now thereafter the case number and the year. Now with this unique number. Just like it is just like every case has a Aadhaar number, just like an Aadhaar number for every case so that from your where you can trace out where the case is to which court it has been transferred. What is the status of the case? where it is reached. Then flexibility in nomenclature of menus. Then another service was added was SMS to be sent automatically to the registered mobile number whenever there is a change in the status of the case. Then the CIS 2.0 has a data health card. Suppose something is missing. Some information is not been feeded. Case has been transferred from one court to another court, but that has not been uh, that has not been brought on record. So all these features health card informs data health card. That's something missing. Then there's one more interesting feature. Hide party name or mask party name. You see there are many cases like uh, juvenile justice cases, family courts where the privacy of the party is very important or if suppose the case is of a national importance, official secrets act or something like that and the person's name is not cannot be disclosed because once you are digitized, once you are on open platform, everybody knows who you are, how many cases are against you. Suppose husband and wife. People would know as to who are warring husband and wife, whether divorce is pending or maintenance is pending. So we had the, the something had to be done to hide all information be there, but hide party names. So in family courts, whenever you will go and find out the information in CIS, you will not get the party's name, you will get X, 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 X. Now court can court can access it. The ad system administrators can access it, but general public cannot access. So that is we called hide or mask party name. You know, this is there was a conference internet conference in which judiciary was also there in China. They were not able to solve this issue. Some of the international uh, digitized platforms are unable to solve the issue as to how to protect the privacy of the parties. But the Pune team got a very good solution for hiding of masking the party's name. Now, lastly, I may tell you about CIS. The, the best advantage of CIS is to ultimately dispense with manual registers. You see, when you have all information in CIS 1 at the time of filing, the entire progress of the case, the movement of the case up and down, appellate court, revision, review, whatever it is, then why do you need the manual registers? So manual registers will ultimately go. They have not gone so far. In Madhya Pradesh, under the leadership of Justice Khanvilkar, we had a very dynamic CPC, Mr. 
I'll just tell you his name. So they worked out that now we have reached a stage that we have sufficient or complete data of the cases. So they have obviated, given up the need of manual registers. Can you imagine you were working in the court day in and day and night? Can you imagine the kind of a freedom the court staff will get to be engaged in some more useful activity in, rather than just filling up the registers, making the entries in multiple, same entry in multiple registers. That is an advantage of the CIS system. Now, let me sum up what was the major targets of e-court phase two, which is still going on, which was the computerization of uncovered and additional courts, connecting the CIS system and the uh, digitization to district legal services, DL, DLSA, Taluka Legal Services Authority, computer training labs in judicial academies, and additional hardware and existing court complexes. But all this was not possible unless the connectivity is ensured. Now we have a strong digital divide in judiciary in our country. There are some places, especially metros or developed, much more developed states. Uh, technologically, technologically wise, like uh, Maharashtra, Punjab, Delhi, to some level, UP, Tamil Nadu, uh, Andhra Pradesh, and, uh, and, and Karnataka, where you have very good connectivity, robust connectivity, both connectivity as power supply. Now, I believe Jammu and Kashmir has this problem, and uh, this problem has to be removed. What happened was that in the phase two project, the job of providing connectivity to all courts and court complexes and judges and courts was given to e-courts, e-committee. E, e and e-committee was trying to carry out this job with the help of the, uh, with the, help of the uh, Department of Justice. Now, when I was the chairman of the e-committee, the Department of Justice was preparing a tender for connectivity of all the courts in the country and it invited all the players. The all the players like Airtel and, and BSNL and all that with one uh, uh, with one uh, uh, idea in mind that any player may come and provide connectivity, but the last mile connectivity will be provided by the BSNL. That tender could not be finalized. The and when I left the committee, the next chairman took an immediate decision that this is something which is very difficult for for the e committee to achieve. So let us decentralize it. So now all high courts have been given that you get your money from your state governments and provide connectivity to all courts. Now what has happened is that some some of the states and some of the high courts are extremely active, not only active, but because their facilities are available to them. Internet connectivity is available. Power supply is 24 seven. So they are able to provide the best of the connectivity. But some states uh, have been left behind. Some remote states have been left behind. Some of them where the proactivity was not there so much. So that has created a huge problem with phase two, both in preparing the national judicial data grid as well as uh, serving the the, the the objects of the uh, e-court e phase two project. Then one or more thing I like to talk about is the cloud technology. By this time, the cloud technology had come into uh, come into play. Now we you did not require individual servers. Now earlier servers were provided in every district. Every district court there were servers were provided. Money was provided and all the data was being collected on server. Then it will from that server, it will go to the state server and then it will go to the national server. Uh, uh, maintained by the NIC National Informatics Center. But with the advent of the cloud technology. Entirely new approach had to be adopted. So all the data was being transferred to the NIC, which they were storing on Shastri Park data center where they had a dedicated uh, racks for judiciary. Now, object of cloud technology is that it can enhance the capacity, it can reduce the capacity, it can shift and change the capacity of the 
data which is available in it. Now the this is this advantage we started getting somewhere in 2017-16-17. Then data center is not sufficient. Once you have a data center, you must have a backup center also. So you know the backup center of Shastri Park NIC uh, Delhi is in Pune. I had an opportunity to visit that. And then there is a disaster man disaster disaster management or disaster recovery center. That's another very interesting part. That suppose there are there is an earthquake, or the center catches fire, or as in the case the floods came in uh, and water entered into the court court campus of uh, uh, in Srinagar. Uh, how would you save the data? So there is a not only backup but the disaster recovery sites also. So you got to it's a very complicated system, but now the entire world, you know, when you are all of you, you are using Google, all of you are using these uh, new technology. All this is on cloud. Cloud doesn't mean that it is actually in the in, in the up above the sky. Cloud means there is a group or a cluster of servers on which this data is 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 uh, kept managed managed. And then I'll talk about the video conferencing from ports and jails. I was told by Mr. Parihar that all of you are doing a lot of remand matters by video conferencing. This is a revolutionary step in judiciary where remands where the accused is not really required on that particular day and only date has been given or the, after first presence of the accused thereafter the remands are required that can be done by video conferencing. We had set up uh, the video conferencing for remands in UP and I'm proud to say that in Delhi and Punjab and in UP in 2013-14 thousands of remands were being made and in what one there was one very interesting case where a very dreaded criminal who had uh, who was mastermind of forging the passports was uh, kept in Lucknow jail and the witnesses were in Mumbai and Pune. And the judge there, you know, they interlinked all the witnesses and lawyers. Abu Salim's case, Abu Salim's case. And the, he was tried by video conferencing while he was in in Lucknow jail. Lucknow jail by a judge there. Uh, it was not a CBI court, it was a special court. So and now the with the advent of COVID, the hearing also has to be done by video conferencing. Uh, I was told by Mr. Parihar that most some of you are doing hearing by video conferencing, but now it is indispensable. So second phase has provided you uh, video conference. You know, in this CIS module, there is a video conference module for video conferencing also, by which you can uh, you can hear the cases by video conferencing, like we are today on a conference in a video conferencing. Then, as I told you, judicial process reengineering, then judicial knowledge management system. Judicial knowledge management system, you know, you have several platforms today for case laws. But do you have any platform for the cases which are being decided and compiled and cataloged of your own district courts? You know, for everything, you know, need not go to Supreme Court, look for decision of Supreme Court or High Court. Even in your districts also, some of the senior judges, senior district judges or you judicial officers are producing some wonderful judgments. So there should be some uh, judicial knowledge management system. The phase two provides for that. It has not been put into operation in phase three. I believe it will be put into operation. Then uh, service delivery, 30 services to the litigants, lawyer and other stakeholders through seven platform. So I think my time of 30, 40 minutes of the presentation is uh, almost running out. So I'll request uh, Mr. Gill to now put off this, uh, uh, this uh, presentation. And I'll just in two minutes, I'll tell you what is phase three. Have you, have any of you read the entire uh, phase two project? It is, it is, it is available both in the, uh, as in, uh, in the, Supreme Court website under the heading of e courts, you have second phase documents. Now, I believe that every judicial officer should read, 
top to bottom A to Z of this second phase document, which is still running. You see, you have to still spend decades in judicial service. And unless you know what development has been made, how we are being digitized, how do we take advantage of that, that, that all that uh, effort and money which has gone into in preparing these uh, national judicial data grid and integrated systems? Now, the third phase document, uh, the chairman, Justice Chansur, has, has, has prepared a vision document with the help of an expert subcommittee. This is the third phase. Third phase is extremely and very ambitious, very ambitious document. I'll just briefly tell you in one minute what are the, what we, what is the e-committee uh, thinking and preparing to do. The process re-engineering re exercise will go on. The platforms will be created for ecosystem design. This is a new word, new word they have coined, ecosystem design. Means that so far as the litigation is concerned, it is not only adjudication. The mitigation of the mitigation of the litigation means how much we should reduce the litigation. That is only possible by enlightening the people, by telling them of their rights and duties. Then containing the litigation by ADR, alternate dispute resolution methods. All this has been included in the platform approach. Then the committee will now, because now technology has undergone tremendous change in the last 10 years. We have to revise our standards, specifications, and certifications. The entire digital infrastructure has to be redesigned. Then we have some key goals like change management, procurement of the hardware, and also the inputs of the software is going to undergo a very revolutionary change. Sequencing, budgeting, monetary, and evolution have been provided a great role. Now there will be a technology officer in every court. It may not be systems officer, a technology officer who will be looking after the entire digitization. You know, your this uh, CIS uh, two has also e-procurement uh, uh, portal on it. Now the all e-procurement, the procurement in the all government offices all over the country has been now change actual tendering to e-tendering. The entire process is there in that. For budgeting also, for monitoring and evaluation also. And you know the judicial officers will be interested to know that even their quotas can be worked out, their units from these systems. The methodology has been changed. Procedures are being simplified. The foundational digital infrastructure has been redesigned. And more emphasis is given uh, apart from court working to the needs of lawyers, citizens, government institutions, companies, and court employees. There are various platforms in the phase three. Phase three is still at the stage of formulation. Uh, I'm not in e-committee, but I will request the all the persons who are attending today, judicial officers, should please read this phase three document. And if you feel any suggestion, however small it may be, it will be very useful to the e-committee. Please give that suggestion to the e-committee. You can give it through your CPC. You can give that suggestion to your chief justice who can place it, who can give it to the e-committee. Now, I'm really very thankful to Justice Pankaj Nittal, your chief justice. Uh, he had appeared before me, argued before me, he became judge. We sat in the bench together for some time. We were in various committees and uh, we are good friends, I can say. I'm thankful to him for giving me an opportunity to sharing my understanding on the subject with you, although I know very little, extremely little, and many a times I feel that I did not use the opportunity to learn the whole thing. Anyway, I'm also thankful to Mr. Parihar. Now I'm ready to, ready to take any questions, but <laughs> I don't know whether I'll be able to answer them or not, but I'll try. I'll try. I have just yes, Mr. Gill. Yes, sir. Uh, put me in line. Have you got any questions in the chat box? Sir, not yet. So I will just, uh, I think, uh, make a small announcement for everyone that uh, anyone who wants to uh, ask any question to uh, Mr. Mwani, sir, 
You can put the question in the chat box. There's a question and answer chat option which is made available to you. You can use that. Uh, Dieter, sir, we read out the question to uh, Mrs. Amwani, and sir, we'll be able to answer your question. So if anyone has any question, you may use this feature. So I think so just let give it give them two three minutes because I think it takes that much of time. And then we can uh, decide. In the meanwhile, you put me online. So. So you're live. It's had been a very enriching experience of hearing Honorable Justice Ambwani. The one of the main uh, hesitation on our part in accepting the technology is that we have all along been embedded in that past, and still we don't want to get rid of that uh, baggage and would uh, would not come forward to accept it. Uh, but with the passage of time. All of our officers have risen and they have started uh, adapting to the new technology because that is the need of the hour. Sir, the main problem which generally we face that uh, insofar as this adaptation of Ubuntu software is concerned, I, I fail to understand why we still say that uh, our data is not being our data. Our data is is not get is not being protected. So that is why we are uh, not banking upon the uh, this uh, uh, other main software. But rather, we are just uh, opening uh, laying stress upon the open soft, uh, source technology. So why this inhibition on our part? Why why because the the source the op, the uh, software which is available in the open market which we can purchase and utilize it. Almost all organizations are doing it. Why should be that inhibition on our part, in the reluctance on our part to accept uh, the uh, these uh, the software which are available in the market? Mr. Parihar, you are absolutely right. Absolutely right. Even I have that, uh, that, that, that question in my mind. It has always been troubling me. You know, I asked this question to the our first chairman, Justice Baruka. Baruka sahab, why, why, why only on this uh, open, open, this uh, free and open source software? Why can't we have the proprietary software and proprietary software which is developed to such an extent? See, all over the world, our software developers, Indian software developers, are the best in the world. Why can't we take them from them? TCS is one of the, such a big uh, software development company. We have so many software development companies. The entire Silicon Valley is full of uh, Indian experts. You know, in the beginning, to begin with, he said, look here, we are just going in for digitization. So we have to be, we have to be very uh, possessive of our uh, data. Uh, our data should be protected. We have a lot of issues of privacy of our data. We have a lot of issues of uh, learning the processes and developing the processes because what happens is, the proprietary software people every time not only they only ask for licenses every year they change and update their technology very soon they update it because you have to buy it again you can't go back so to begin with they went with the open source in the second phase i was ex expecting very frankly that we will go in for proprietary software some very highly developed good software which understands our needs and which can deliver our goods but once again, the same set of, uh, you know, conservatism was prevailing at that time and the policy was not changed. I hope that in this third phase, the, the uh, Justice Chanchur will understand. And another thing, another, another thing, you know, uh, Department of Justice is our partner. They provide money and Department of Justice is also not prepared to change. You see, Prime Minister will send the mail, the mail on Gmail. But when it comes to sending the official, the secretary, he will have to use that NIC. Most of these secretaries in the government of India have Gmail IDs, almost probably one. But when they have to make any official communication, it has to be NIC.com. This is that mindset with which we were going. Unless we come out of the you know, it is something like this. If we go for proprietary software, we will become slaves of these big multinational companies. We will have to come out of it. And be, you know, our NIC team in Pune, who is developing these the CIS, is working so hard. 
all that effort why are you making that effort because all that effort can be bought from the proprietary software so that it is my answer to you i hope that phase 3 will understand this so oh, yaar sir we have a we have two questions in the chat yes chat box uh, so can you uh, yes you please read those questions okay so I, the, yeah i'll read out the question to uh, ambani sir and to you straight yes. away yes the first question is uh, decentralization of e code program should be set up at the at the e code committee but at a district level so i think sir you mentioned that now has been decentralized and the high court at the has been done at the high court level is a suggestion that it should be done at the district court level your views on it sir i agree with you every district court has its own needs its own requirements its own baggage its own history and every district court you know judges may change they may be transferred lawyers remain the same and if the lawyer remain the same their demands and requirements required remain the same you know e committee has not taken the lawyers with them in the development of the digitization i agree with you but at present we have decentralized from see e committee has decentralized from e committee to high courts now high courts must cater to the need of the district courts their uh, their their felt needs but i think because of this transferability of judicial officers no district court has its own fixed identity lawyers have the district court because today a district judge is there tomorrow it will be changed after 3 years you will find entire set of judicial officers have been changed so you are right decentralization should come to that level but at least a part of decentralization means their own requirement their needs suppose they have problems in internet suppose they have problems in working with their uh, infrastructure hardware or a particular adaptability of the software there should be a lot of interaction between the district systems officers and now the technology will officer will come with the cpc and i believe that the court administration should take an, a very very active interest in this to resolve their problems yes just yes, mr the next question so the next question though it's uh, the next question looks a bit incomplete but i'll still read it out yes, please. uh it says uh, sir please ex explain the concept of ecosystem vis-a-vis -vis it yes ecosystem is a new term which has been used in the phase 3 document it's a new term now ecosystem uh, what it means is it means is that what we have been dealing with today is only adjudication uh i think i have been there is some problem there is some light has just gone uh, down at your end sir we can see you sir we can hear you okay then sir have ah uh, this uh, video is getting blurred yes i think uh, the light has just gone off uh, we will uh, I, my apologies to everyone uh, we will uh, we will just wait for yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's okay now come in so now it's okay now i was explaining to you what is the ecosystem they are changing the entire ecosystem of the e committee project means it will not only be just adjudication starting with it mitigate mitigate means educate the litigant to certain extent that he may not unnecessarily rush to the court he must know his rights you must have seen that people do not have proper understanding of the the, the their rights and how to redress those rights so one is mitigation and that mitigation can be done online second is containment you must have heard about pre litigation lok adalat pre litigation mediation so to contain the litigation by using these new methods of adr and third is resolution that is by adjudication so this is the ecosystem they are trying to develop mitigate contain resolve this is for the first time this word has been coined and used in this third phase so uh yes. yes sir sir there is uh, one more issue which uh, yes. is of paramount importance what is happening that sir though the at the district level or at the taluka level the technology issue has been taken up but since there are lot of stakeholders be it the district police the jail authorities the civil administration i think while drawing this project the even this eco 2 project 
there is some apprehension in my mind that uh, all the stakeholders have not been taken on board. And uh, as a result, what is happening that, uh, sir, as far as this uh, connectivity, when there was an issue with that, the, all the courts, that is district courts, high court and the Supreme Court would, along with the district jails, they would be on the same platform. Now, after that uh, glitch with regard to withdrawal of license, now what is happening that uh, at the end of the district court, the technology is doing well, but there is no synchronization with the uh, with the jail uh, software, jail program. So as a result, there is the, the video conference glitches remain there. So is there any mode that uh, this all the three all the stakeholders can again be uh, involved in the judicial in this process? Ultimately, we have to serve the cause of. Uh, justice and unless the judiciary on its own cannot be the sole uh, distributor there has to be the participation of other uh, um, agencies as well so in yes. this regard sir uh, what is your take on this sir interoperable criminal justice system means uh, connecting jails courts and police was a very important part of the phase two but unfortunately it did not work out that well because firstly we have to bring in those stakeholders, let them understand the importance of this interoperable system and give connectivity to each other, both horizontally and vertically. It's only then, at present, we have only been, we have only succeeded in getting demands, judicial demand by the video conferencing. But we have to interact with them. We have to connect with them. Like every time, uh, you know how much time is wasted in just finding out the antecedents of the uh, the criminal at the time when he, uh, bail is filed. How much time is wasted in finding out the copy of the FIR to get the copy of the FIR? How much time is wasted in finding out as to how much time he has spent in jail? So unless uh, once these 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 all these agencies are connected with each other, and even for the medical evidence, even if the evidence is taken direct, directly from the medical college, there is some glitch. So we can see you, we can hear you. Can you see us? I think the video of uh, Justice Ambani is. Uh, yeah, I think there's just uh, some technical glitch. Uh, the speaker will just be back. Might be a, some technical uh, uh, glitch at the end. Just be with us for an, another moment or so. So we'll be back. I think Parihar, sir, there's nothing. Uh, yes. Just uh, yes, I would like to. Yeah, back. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, back. Yes, please, sir. So this is the third phase has now. I, I hope, I hope, I will also give suggestions that the we must complete the 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 areas where we could not uh, achieve that targets from second phase in the third phase also. Uh, and you see, for the for that we have. So, so I would I would go for now closing comments. I suppose, is it now workable, Mr. Gill? I think so. Just uh, sir is I think having some trouble. Probably the light. I think maybe because uh, yeah. sir might be using the Wi-Fi, and the moment the light goes, the Wi-Fi goes off, okay. and that's when the moment it comes back, sir comes back to it. So we can see if sir is back. We can check with one sir is back. I think another minute. Less than a minute, sir, should be back. We'll check with sir, and uh, uh, then we can uh, go on to the closure of this session. Okay. Is it workable? Uh, sir is still yet to come. I think in the meantime, I think sir is going to re-log in now. In the meantime, uh, I'll just quickly read the questions that we uh, we have received. So if anyone has a similar question, uh, we will be able to get, take care of it. Uh, one question is about uh, the what is the authenticity of the data that we have on CIS? That's one. And second question is about if we have if we are keeping the data, everything data is online available now. Do we have to still maintain the manual records? And report along alongside. 
So we'll be raising these two questions once uh, Ambani sir is back online. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Sinjan sir, just give me a moment. I'll just uh, talk. I'll just call up sir on the mobile phone and check uh, with the status and uh, get back to you on that. Is it now? OK, so back uh, just a sec. So it is so has just logged in and uh, he's just switching on his video. Yes, now I'm back. Yes, uh, yes sir is back. Sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir, there yes. were some technical glitches, sir. So. so. We have run out of the time now. Sir, there was one question uh, that uh, if you have uh, all the data online, then what is, is there any necessity of keeping the uh, physical record of registers? No, not at all. Not at what, what, that when that moment is reached, when you have, when you can be satisfied that all the data is uh, now available with us and that data is safe and it is a backup, then there's no need for registers, no need for registers. And that has been done in Madhya Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh, they've started it. But uh, you know, there is a lot of conservatism in our judiciary. Today, today, if you will put this agenda in your full court meeting, I think half the judges will say, no, 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 not the time. Right, time is not ripe. So we have to be confident. Somebody has to certify that all the data is available and all data. We can start phasing out the registers, uh, you know, gradually also to reach that stage. If we do not completely wipe off all the physical registers, we can start phasing them out slowly and gradually. Like filing register, you can phase it out. The register by which the cases are transferred from one place to another, the registers by which you are keeping the records of the appeals or the revisions. Uh, I don't know what are the registers maintained by you. That is another difficulty because every state district judiciary is maintaining their own registers. And the language is also there. Aap ke to kuch Urdu mein ho rahe Some registers must be in Urdu. Urdu has happened to be official language. Sir, yeah. Official language of Jammu Kashmir for a long time. Yes. So, but once the records are there, it can be phased out. It can be phased out. But that that decision, that call has to be taken by the court, high court. So it's been nice, uh, uh, Ambani sir. I would like to thank uh, Ambani sir for presenting us with such an informative understanding of how the e-court project has worked and it is working. The presence of e-courts in judicial system is an advantage for all of us. We are thankful that we have such a dynamic figure like Justice Ambwani who provided us his vision and has further strengthened the application of e-court project. We hope that the complete digitization of judicial system in the near future becomes a shared reality. I would once again express my thanks to Justice Ambwani for having spared his valuable time for joining our, us on this webinar. Our participants have been enriched by your experience and your sharing of thoughts on this e-core project, though your lordship is not as are now connected with the e-committee, but your valuable inputs and suggestions would always be invited by them. They would remain there and we hope to have your lordship in future again we would be once again expressing our thanks and the Honorable Chief Justice of Jammu and Kashmir High Court has very high opinion for your Lordship. Your Lordship said that your work together on behalf of Honorable Chief Justice, I once again express thanks to your good self for having spared time for joining this program. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chetan Gill. You. Uh, I will also uh, express my thanks to SCC Online. They had given us this uh, trial run program, so we would like to interact with them in future as well. So, thank you, Mr. Paria. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. I also express my thanks to my officers who have joined this web webinar. Despite today being the court day, they have spared their time to be in this program. Thank you. Sir. So, I would just...
Yeah, so I would just like to add one more thing in this. The link that uh, okay. from which everyone joined today, the same link you can click on and you can uh, rerun this entire uh, okay. you know, uh, webinar. So it will work like a, like a video for you. So you may click on that link and go through the entire thing one more time. Thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. We'll end right. this webinar now. Thank, thank you. you.